What is going on everybody? This is Devin with Team SCG Hobby and today we're going to be doing some live commentary through a modern league and we're going to be doing this league with Jund or as it's become known nowadays as Boomer Midrange. With the recent bannings in modern and every other format, modern being the biggest one for sure, uh, the format has been such a wild west style that you can pretty much play anything but honestly I've been playing a lot of Jund lately and it feels really really good in this current iteration of the modern format so we're gonna be taking it through a league today seeing how it does against the rest of the field I expect a lot of wild stuff to happen and we're gonna have a good time the list you see in front of you is pretty stock in terms of the main board lightning bolts inquisitions of Kozilex thought seizes fatal pushes Tarmogoyfs Ren and Six, Liliana of the Veils, Bloodbraid Elves, all these things you expect to see in a Jun deck. My sort of take on the list, uh, I prefer Assassin's Trophy over Abrupt Decay. The flexibility of hitting anything, for me, gives this the nod over Abrupt Decay, with Counterspell decks being probably a little bit less popular. I know Blue-White Control has been doing really well, but overall there's going to be less. Uh, the not counterable claws on abrupt decay loses a little bit of stock i know this gives my opponent a land but the fact that it can hit anything i'm a big fan of i do have three seasoned pyromancer in my deck instead of two and a random one of creature i've been a real big fan of seasoned pyromancer lately very powerful card just being able to churn through your deck and also filtering if you have bad cards and making one ones and then also the flashback is pretty good and then croxa as my secondary two drop slot very powerful card also just its inevitability to keep coming back unless they get rid of it uh, it's been very powerful and it swings for nine so it's pretty sweet in terms of the sideboard it's really hard to make a sideboard that like you're really comfortable with especially in a format as open as modern and especially after some big shakeups but there are some decks i definitely expect to see so we sort of leaned into that we've got collective brutality to deal with burn and prowess decks we've got Plague Engineer to deal with any kind of creature, go wide decks. I've stocked three pillages in my sideboard. I've been a fan of this over Cleansing Wildfire as land destruction, as it also sort of dual modes into an artifact hate, giving me a little bit extra uh, stuff against Tron decks, which is uh, one of our worst matchups. At Ancient Grudge, one boil, it used to be two, but like I said, I expect less blue-white control and other control decks overall, so we're going down to one. I still want one because this card is a house against those blue decks. Ashiok Dream Render, a little bit of graveyard hate. It's a little slow for those fast graveyard decks, but the your opponents can't search their decks might come up if there's any Titan decks coming around. Nihil Spell Bombs uh, as our main graveyard hate. I'm only packing four overall, so if we run up against Dredge, it's going to be a little bit tough. And the deck that I'm most interested in seeing the matchup for is Green-White Heliod. It's a deck that's definitely coming back in popularity after some bans. Uh, I'm stalking one Reign of Gore in my sideboard to try to fight this matchup. I don't know if it's a good or bad matchup, but Infinite Life we can't win through, so Reign of Gore hopefully will uh, help us in that. But let's just run it through a league and see what happens and uh, play some live commentary. Hopefully you will join me and we'll see you in the league. Welcome back everybody to round number one here in our modern league with Jund. This hand has got a lot of lands in it. Uh, looks like we're on the draw as well. We do have Bolt if it's an aggressive deck and Tarmogoyf. Uh, these hands are kind of norm or tricky. They might sometimes get there. They might also just super flood. You're really hoping to just draw nothing but spells. I think I'm gonna take a Discipline Mulligan and uh, throw this one back. And we're definitely very well rewarded for that choice. This hand is very, very good. I think we can throw back the second Black Cleave Cliffs. Yeah, I think that's fine. Didn't good luck have fun our opponent? It's a bad manner of me. Turn one wooded foothills typically means not good things for me if it's dredge. It's burn, so pitching that black leaf cliffs over the peatland was definitely not good. We're gonna draw a Ren and six. Oh, so we'll play black leaf cliffs and pass. 
we'll let this goblin guide trigger, see if we can draw an extra card, and then we will push it. Unless they play like a swift spear plus bolt, and then we have some choices to make. <laughs> it's also Naya Burn. Eidolon of the Great Revel is a card that's going to be pretty tough to beat. I might have to actually push that one instead of the Goblin Guide. Mm, actually, if I push the Goblin Guide in response to this Eidolon, and then just play Tarmogoyf, we're going to take two down to 16. But any spells that he casts, what will it be? Well, Tarmogoyf will be a 3-4, so two burn spells kills the Goyf. But that should take up his entire turn. I'm actually just going to kill this. Normally I kill the Eidolon because the card is an absolute house against us. But we're going to get a basic forest here just to save our life total and play Tarmogoyf. We'll take two for it down to 15. But we've got a blocker for the Eidolon, and if he wants to cast two burn spells to kill the Goyf, uh, he's taking four. So we're in pretty good position if that happens. Brush fire element. So is this just like a zoo deck? That's kind of cool. You got the fetch land? Of course they have the fetch land. I'm not going to block. Our hand is lining up really well against what's going on here. A second copy of Renin 6. So we're going to take three because of this land, which kind of sucks, but we'll have to see what our opponent wants to sack here. We really have to be careful with how we go about the rest of our turns, making sure that we... So we sacked the Eidolon. Very interesting. I'm not going to attack. He could just have three lightning bolts and we die, which definitely is a possibility. But looks like it's more of a zoo deck than burn. Or maybe like a mishmash, which is a very interesting deck. Is it a second brush fire elemental? Because that's going to suck. Don't have a second fetch land. Okay, no fetch. Is he not going to attack? Attacks with both. Well, we're definitely... Wait. He's attacking me with both. So we'll just block one. He could have like fetch land lightning bolt to kill my goif. But snow land is that? Will that matter? Would imagine nothing. Very interesting. Very interesting. So. We're going to plus one. We're going to discard this round six. One, we have two, and two, it makes our Tarmogoyf bigger. <laughs> so it, it, it's a landfall deck. Okay, that's neat. Uh, we're going to play Ren and six. We're going to kill this creature. And because I am at six life, I guess... If it's less burn and more landfall, I'm going to attack because we can actually win next turn depending upon what our opponent does. We can ping him. I mean, he might just have two lightning bolts in and we're dead, which is probably what it is if that's his line. Oh, we just had Boros Trim. Okay. Well, it was close. The Eidolon. It's interesting to think if the Eidolon play mattered or not, but we'll have to uh, readjust for game two. So we're definitely taking Thought Seize out. Plague Engineer is actually not bad because it just sort of blocks and also can stop like the Step Lynxes or the Brush Fire Elementals. He might also have uh, the, the dog from Zendikar, Akum Hellhound I think is the name or something like that. What do we want to take out? I think I can trim on one Bloodbraid Elf. It's a little slow. Pulse might also just be too slow, but if they go wide, it's not a bad card. Ren and Six kills creatures, so we want to stay up on that one. I'm kind of thinking K Command can come out. It's not really a lot that we want to... Plus, it's, it's kind of situational because 
they can like drop fetch lands and hold them up like he did that last turn. I like to trim Croxes a lot of the time because they're gonna bring in some form of graveyard hate. They're Naya, so they might have something like rest in peace, which is more than likely just what it is. I think this is fine. I think the rest of our cards do stuff. Three collective brutality will definitely help in terms of life gain and such, so <laughs> that's it's a lot of lightning bolts. But uh I never turn up a turn one Inquisition into turn two do something, so unless it has like no lands. Then I'll then I'll throw that one away. But they're not gonna have a creature stick around for very long. We just gotta kinda hope we hit some land drops. Maybe like a planeswalker. This is definitely a possibility of being a trap hand, but just have to figure out how it goes. Our hand lined up pretty well in the last game. I think the only thing that might have been a contention was leaving the Eidolon around and taking four from that. That'll be a game that you can look back on and really sort of evaluate each line. Double Eidolon Renegade Rallier. Well, did he mulligan? He did mulligan the six. So double Eidolon is a house, but Renegade Rallier just gets them back. So I think I'm forced to take the Rallier and just bolt these Eidolons down. Nothing on turn one from our opponent that's the aggro deck will definitely help us quite a bit. Plays a Tarn and passes, so he did not draw a one drop. And there's our green mana, which is very nice. I think I'm actually going to play this, that way we can fetch a dual land, tapped of course, on end step. Would have liked to have possibly seen another hand disruption spell so we didn't have to fight through two Eidolons, but currently our life total is not bad. These like burn style aggro decks, I don't ever feel like they're bad matchups for Jund, but they can be tricky. We especially, like we're really hoping to draw Collective Brutality, that would be really really strong. I didn't fetch my land, but that's fine. I don't really, I'm not really forced to do that right now. We also drew an overgrown tomb so we can blood braid elf. So second idol on down. I'm gonna wait till end step. That way he can't play something else without losing life. Little bit of a, uh, I'm gonna make sure I fetch this time so I don't forget. And we drew our overgrown tomb. So I think I'm just gonna get a stomping ground to make sure we have some green mana. And now the question is, do I shock this Overgrown Tomb in or just play it tapped? And now we play it tapped because we drew something to do this turn. And we can still hold up Lightning Bolt, so answered my question perfectly. And now we have a really big beat stick. Opponent still has four cards in hand, which is uh, a lot for an aggro deck. But he kept a really awkward clunky hand on him all the six, so... Interesting to know what he threw back. Brushfire Elemental... That's a lot of fetch lands. So if he's probably going to attack. We can actually just block. He's forced to double fetch, put us him to five and then seven, and we can just bolt it down and kill it. Actually, he f***ed up. Bruh. He should have let this resolve first. If you let this trigger resolve, this becomes a five five, and I can't bolt it. Because if you let the trigger resolve, or if you, if you let me respond, yeah, see, he, he knows he messed up. Like, if you wait until I respond, you I can't respond, I should say, because he could just crack the second fetch line in response to the bolt, and then I will die. But, because he did it that way, I could bolt in response to the fetch land with the first trigger still on the stack, and win. So, a little bit of... Misplay from our opponent, but I will happily take that. So here's the scary stuff for Jund against these like aggressive decks. But I guess that's kind of any deck against like these burning zoo type decks. Um, them on the play is kind of terrifying. Now he did mulligan to six, which will help. And this hand is pretty solid. Like we can play a blood crypt, push or bolt. Can play a Tarmogoyf, turn three, play another Tarmogoyf. I mean, that's a lot of damage from our land, so we'll probably want to have some of this stuff enter tapped. 
but I'm definitely keeping this hand. Like if we shock this Blood Crypt in on turn one and just kill whatever his turn one play is, then that's even better. No Inquisition, but we did cut two Thought Seizes, so less likely to have those on turn one. I like I like this hand. Opponent Mulligan to six. We're on the draw. We're going to get an extra card. Looks like he has a turn one play this time. Probably Goblin Guide or Step Links. It's a Goblin Guide. Can we draw an extra card? Be sweet. Land? Nope. But a Renin six. So that's also a pretty good one. So I could shock this Blood Crypt in and just like push this goblin guide and see what he wants to do because he probably will have an Eidolon of the Great Revel again but then we can play like one of these lands tapped just kill the the Eidolon if he plays it typically you want to kill this on your opponent's turn because you want to see the extra card shocking this in I'll go to 16 I could just get a basic mountain but then I can't play any of my spells. Like if anything, I want this to get a basic forest. So we will shock that in and pass the turn. This is very similar so far to game number one, but he's not playing the idol on pre-combat. So we'll let this trigger resolve. We're going to draw another lightning bolt. So we know he has like three drops in his deck. So I'm just going to use this push over the bolt also conceals that we have two lightning bolts wow he didn't have a second land so that's really big for us so now that we play Tarmogoyf around in six I kind of just want to get this Tarmogoyf down one it's gonna block something and two it holds the information that Renin six is in our hands we might play like an elemental and a lightning bolt my face he bolted my face <laughs> a little rude. Red and six getting back lands is definitely not the that like getting back fetch lands I should say is not what I want to do this game. I think I might just use them and start pinging stuff. So there's a step links. He probably still didn't draw a land or he's saving it for the landfall. But he knows I have a lightning bolt. Which is an interesting choice. I don't think any of the besides brushfire elemental, I don't think any of the landfall creatures have haste, but he would have to put it in as a 1-1, one, one, and a 1-1 one, one is not that scary right now. So we're just going to... I mean, he could mutagenic growth this, but he didn't. So there you go. We're going to attack. If he mutagenic growth, then I just hold. Yeah, no second land. This is really rough for my opponent, because we're just sort of going to take over the game at this point. And a Liliana of the Veil. Yikes. We're going to play the second Goyf. Don't really see there being a reason not to. We're going to attack, and then we'll decide what we want to do with these. this Renin 6. These are 6 power, 7. Doesn't really matter. I could bolt my opponent, which would kill him faster. Also, I could double ping and make these bigger. We'll, we'll double ping my opponent. And we'll hold up a lightning bolt. And it didn't matter, because our opponent didn't draw a second land. So, kind of a good first two games we had some good interaction some back and forth and all that and then the last game was kind of a non-game but thank you guys for joining me for round one see you back for round number two welcome back everybody to round number two here with our modern league with boomer mid-range aka jund and we've got here we can't cast this Lily on turn three unless we draw another black land. But Lightning Bolt, Kroxa, good cards, could cycle Forgotten Cave. I'm going to keep it. It's a little bit risky depending upon what our opponent is playing, but I'm going to play out the fetch. Possibly not fetch, depending upon what our opponent does. Blood Crypt, am I getting Inquisition or Thought Seized? I am. It's probably a Jund Mirror or Black Red Midrange, which I haven't really seen a lot of since the Bannings. Took my Lily. 
my uncastable lily. Very interesting. Well, we're going to get... Do, do, do. We're going to get a Blood Crypt. Deck is a little bit heavier on red nowadays than green. Tarmogoyf is a good one. But we're going to play this Kroxa, get a card out of my opponent's hand. Discarded a Swamp. Snow-covered Swamp probably doesn't mean anything, but I could be wrong. Could be very wrong. Could be a new deck. Just going off of the information provided. We might also have a lot of lands in hand if he's discarding Swamp. But he did just take three, so well, second Inquisition kind of blows. Probably will take Tarmogoyf unless he's got push. Well, well, he doesn't have push, so it is a Jund Mirror. Raging Ravine is pretty much a dead giveaway. Can we draw another Tarmogoyf? We'll draw our own Raging Ravine. I'm going to give the information away on what the card I drew. We have Bolt and Cycle Forgotten Cave up, so he's probably going to play a Lily this turn, would be my guess. Looks like he's setting up for Liliana. The gen mid-range. This is going to be a grindy one. Hope you guys got a drink and some snacks. He has his own Tarmogoyf. I'm going to cycle in response. No reason. Just because I can. And we drew another land. So if we lightning bolt him on his end step. Like so. Untap. Draw a card. A verdant cow. So we didn't need to bolt in the end, but so what does he have? He has sorcery and land. So we want to get rid of everything else. Cast this Kroxa. Black, red, red, black. Definitely want to get rid of this, 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 this. And we'll save the Forgotten Cave in case we draw a Renin Six. Our opponent also missed a land drop. No, did he? No, we were on the play. He played the Stomping Ground. Don't hit a Lily. Red and six. That one's okay. Opponent has one card plus a Verdant Catacombs in hand. A Lightning Bolt. So we can bolt the Bloodbraid Elf. We can attack probably the Ren and six. Because that card's just going to get us too much. It's going to get our opponent, I should say, too much value. Um, and I think I just want the Ren and six dead. I think that's my choice. Opponent still has to discard a card. Probably will discard the Verdant Catacombs. Oh, that made his Tarmogoyf a 5-6. Because I got rid of all the other creatures. Mm. Okay, okay, okay. He did discard the Verdant Catacombs he just picked up. And now he's deciding if he wants to keep the Ren in 6 or the Tarmogoyf. And it looks like he wants to keep the Tarmogoyf. Which I feel like is a smart choice. Depending on what his last card is. Well, he's drawing an extra one, so... But I think definitely next turn, unless we draw a really good spell, we're just activating Raging Ravine and just going to town. Because that's 13 damage. That he has to deal with. <laughs> so... I mean, that's a pretty good one. So we will definitely cast this. Play the land out. I'd rather have the land in play. We just kind of want as much mana as possible to do multiple spells. And we drew a Tarmogoyf and a Lightning Bolt, which is pretty nuts. So let's attack with Kroxa. Force our opponent to discard. He might draw in response. Try to find a removal spell or something. Because like one Fatal Push just brings the whole Jenga blocks down on my current plan. He stopped me in combat, which means he probably has a fatal... Oh, no, he's drawing. Yeah, draw a card. Smart, 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 smart. Did you find a fatal push? But these are the matchups, like, that... that he has main deck Clothis? <sighs> Woof. That's a 6-7 Tarmogoyf now. Okay, so we're going to lose the Kroxa here, but... The Seasoned Pyromancer hit us some really good cards. So we're going to bolt his Tarmogoyf down. We're going to play our own Tarmogoyf that is now a 6-7 because he discarded Clothis. Returning Bloodbraid Alpha. That Kologon's Command was definitely a very good 
last card. Very, very good last card. Lightning Bolt, not the best. And he just concedes. I don't know if I would have conceded there. I don't know what his last card in his hand was, but what would we have drawn? A land, that actually lets us cast Kroxa again, so yeah, it would have been pretty rough for our opponent. Okay, the Jund Mirror. There is a lot of contention of what should be sided out in these matchups. I am very old school in my opinions. I really, really believe siding out Thought Seizes and Inquisitions is just correct. I might leave Thought Seizes in, depending upon what I want to bring in from my board. I'm definitely bringing in Plague Engineer. It doesn't really kill anything small, but it's just a death touch blocker that can sort of trade with a Tarmogoyf or Kroxa if he's got one of those. My sideboard's definitely not built for this matchup, to say the least. So we might be leaving in some Thought Seizes. It's just such a bad top deck. Like, this card at least cycles. Also adds to the Tarmogoyf count. I could also bring an Ashiok to stop him from fetching. Bolts, pushes, trophies, all of these cards are, are great. We definitely want all of these. I think I'm going to stick to my guns at least on the draw and bring in some Ashioks. I know a lot of people don't side out Inquisitions and Thought Seizes anymore in these mid-range matchups, but I'm way too old school. I think it's just correct. They're really bad top decks, and this is definitely a top deck matchup. They're just, they're not, you're, you're going to empty your hand. Yeah, on turn one, they're very good, but if you don't have them on turn one, then they're not very good. So this hand, I didn't say anything, is great. Bolt for any kind of early shenanigans. Drew a Tarmogoyf, so now we really curve. I mean, we're not playing on anything on turn one, but one, two, three, four is gorgeous. Just will depend on what our opponent plays, that's all. Either topped deck that Thought Seize, or he didn't cast it on turn one. For, I'm going to go ahead and assume that he just topped. He took my Tarmogoyf. Very interesting. I guess to knock me off my curve. Too bad I drew another really good two drop. No fetch lands, which kind of sucks, but it's like seasoned pyromancer is a good one. How many tokens are you gonna make? Just one. So he discarded another seasoned pyromancer and a land, so he probably has good spells or a bunch of lands in his hand. So no fetch land means this random six is still not the best, but I want to get this lily down. So we'll ping this. We'll keep the plague engineer for now. Play this lily. We'll make him sack something. He's not bringing those tokens back for a little bit. Even if he does, we have the plague engineer. Both of my Planeswalkers are susceptible to Lightning Bolt, but if he kept Thought Seizes in, he might have sided out Lightning Bolts. Fatal Push, not good. <laughs> That's not a good one. His Cascades have not been kind to him. He chose Liliana of the Veil. He wants his cards in his hand. If I hit my fourth land, I'm playing Bloodbraid Elf. If I don't, we have some choices to make. And we hit the fourth land. And it's a fetch land with Ren and Six. So it's even better. We're going to get a forest because we don't have two green sources. These are very easy turns at this point. I mean, I could hold up K Command and Bolt. But man, does slamming a Bloodbraid Elf just feel so good. What could we hit? I think anything is really good. Like, we took out most of our bad hits, like Thought Seizes. It's pretty good. That's pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and say he doesn't have a second Bloodbraid Elf and just attack. Even if he has a second Bloodbraid Elf, he probably is just going to kill the Liliana again. And we've we've got ourselves pretty set up. That hit was huge. 
a Renin 6. Okay. Chose to le let the lily live. And he played the land. So does he have something to play with the land? No. He has to have like a Colagon's command or something. You gonna do something in my draw step maybe? In my upkeep? No? Nothing? So we definitely want to make sure we tick up first because this is one of my favorite interactions between these two planeswalkers is you can just tick up on a land and discard it to the lily and you keep all of your good cards in your hand. Discarded a fatal push. Interesting. I'm gonna hit the wren and bolt it. I have a second lightning bolt. He might also kill this Bloodbraid Elf. Colagon's command to get back your Bloodbraid Elf. I don't really want him to still have this Renin 6. But do I really want to lose? Oh wait, I can just Colagon's command. I don't know what his last card in his hand is. The question is, do I? how do I deal with this Renin 6? And... It might have been right to ping the red and six with mine. All right, we're we're gonna just we're gonna commit some resources here. All my planeswalkers have been activated. He's gonna cast his bloodbraid elf spell bomb. Okay, his cascades have definitely been less impactful than mine. There is there is no doubt about that. And land. So. I assume he kills the lily. Yep. That is fine. He might tick up the spell bomb in response to my verdant. Oh god, we drew a sec or my uh Renin 6 activation. We drew a second blood right off. I think I'm okay with him doing that. Okay, so he is activating. We ain't hiding anything here. I hit my own Nile spell bomb. <laughs> that was a little that was a little funky, but I'm gonna hold up Bolt to deal with his. So this is revealed. I don't have a graveyard anymore. Let's see what our opponent does now. Is it a second Bloodbraid Elf? Are we just like windmill slamming Bloodbraid Elves at this point? Holy crap. I okay. Well, he's taking my Plague Engineer, which sucks. But. <laughs> you, have, you have the Bloodbraid Elf. Don't worry, guys. I imagine he just hits Renin 6, right? Like, a second spell bomb. Doesn't attack? Very interesting. What do we draw? Ooh. I can't flash that back, which sucks. That's a really good one, though. Let's draw a card and neuter his graveyard. We drew the Fatal Push. So we don't want to Kroxa into uh, an open spell bomb. So let's just cast our blood braid off. Hit something good. Ooh. That's a good one. Well he doesn't have that anymore, so what can we name? We're just gonna name Elemental. No reason not to just stop the shenanigans from seasoned pyromancers. And we'll just attack with both, because that's six damage and he has to choose what he wants to do. Opponent has one card in hand. He's gonna block. So we'll take three down to seven. So what did he cut? He had to have cut like lightning bolts to get because he kept Inquisition and Thought Season, unless he just like trimmed on the number, which is also a possibility. Just don't be like the third Bloodbraid Elf in a row. 
that's a lot of value that I don't know if we can come back from. Okay, a Tarmogoyf, that can be fatal pushed. So we can actually activate Raging Ravine. He has to block, push you. Let's attack, see what he's got. Because Raging Ravine is always there, we can always activate that later. We don't need to be activating it into a bunch of open mana and losing one of our only lands, even though we do have Renin 6. Looks like he's got some form of removal. Uh, black, red, Kroxa, trophy. Oh no, I mistapped my lands. I was supposed to tap this for the red for Kroxa. That way I had black and green. So we know his last card is a Bloodbraid Elf. We don't have our Assassin's Trophy up, so what can he hit with that Bloodbraid Elf? He can hit a Lightning Bolt, he can hit a Trophy. We'll ping him. I think he cut Lightning Bolt. He hit a Renin 6. So that's actually not terrifying at all. He pings my Renin 6. Is he going to attack my Renin 6? No. And we drew a fetch land. Okay, that makes things interesting. We have value for Ren and Six now. So we attack. He has to block the Raging Ravine. So if I go this at Ren and Six, this at him, he blocks this. He could bolt the Raging Ravine in response to. You know what? We're in. I'm not here to to be a little baby. I'm here to attack people. Looks like he has a... Okay, so he kept Lightning Bolt in. We have the cards in hand. He doesn't. Okay, he's gonna block. That's fine. We can actually just get the Raging Ravine back. So we still have lethal for next turn. And there it is. That might have done it. The Raging Ravine get back might have done it. I mean, either way, we still have Kroxa and we have stuff to play, so... Very, very close game. Very good interactive mid-range mirror. That was fun. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll be back for round number three. Welcome back, everybody, to round number three of our Modern League with Jund Old School. Currently 2-0. and oh, We played against Naya Landfall in another Jund deck. Where it looks like we'll be on the draw here for game number three. Good spells in this hand, but no black mana, so... And two Raging Ravines, that's a lot of tap lands. It's going to be a little too slow. We're going to throw it back. Also a pretty atrocious hand. We're really sort of stretching the boundaries. I don't want to go to five, but I think we're forced to here. And this hand isn't very good either, especially if we're against any kind of aggro deck. But I'm not going to go to four... So let's pitch the Raging Ravine and what do we want to throw back? It's either Black Cleave Cliffs or Stomping Ground. I think we'll throw back the Stomping Ground. On the draw, Mulligan to five. What are we up against? Polluted Delta, some blue black deck. Okay. That's actually an insane draw because now we can inquisition him turn one and inquisition thought seize on turn two and he will basically be in the exact same position we are is he going to <laughs> glacial footpath foot flood plain looks like a blue white deck it is in fact a blue white deck so, Supreme Verdict, Chase the Mind Sculptor, Double Mana Leak, and Snapcaster Mage. So I think we're going to take Snapcaster Mage with this Inquisition. He's going to play a Flooded Strand and pass. He's going to Mana Leak our Inquisition of Kozilek. Or, I could take the first Mana Leak. Nah, we're taking the Snapcaster Mage. Card is way too good. Double Mana Leak is something we'll just have to play around. But... It won't be too bad for us. What do we draw next? A Tarmogoyf. So we're definitely not going to be putting our Tarmogoyf. Let's see if we can bait out this Mana Leak.
Because if we can, we're getting that Jace the Mind Sculptor into the graveyard. Looks like he's got some snow, and we did bait the Mana Leak. We were successful. So now we Black Cleave Cliffs, and we Thought Seize our opponent. He drew another land, so we're going to take the Jace the Mind Sculptor. Leave him with a Mana Leak, a Supreme Verdict, and a land. So we're not going to cast the Starmogoyth into the Mana Leak. That would be silly. Drew a land and an opt the past two turns. So what will he draw? I put it on the bottom. Not going to fetch. We want to draw lands. Renin 6 is definitely getting leaked. <laughs> there, is, there is no way in hell that card is not getting mana leaked. So I think we're going to start shoving. Just... Uh, Definitely don't want to get a black red. Let's get a black green. We're going to bait with our Tarmogoyf and get Renin 6 because Tarmogoyf just dies to Supreme Verdict and Renin 6 will survive the Supreme Verdict. So now we have to hope he doesn't have like a cryptic command. Oh, he just drew another Jace. Five mana Tef. Well, thankfully we have Assassin's Trophy for that one. So. Hopefully he didn't draw a two mana spell or force of negation. That would suck. But we're pretty much locked into casting this and praying, which it lived, which is good. So now we'll get our verdant catacombs. We'll play and fetch. And because he has two cards in hand, we know one is supreme verdict. And because the random six survived, I'm not going to play around force of negation. I'm just going to get a basic forest here. I don't really see a reason not to. I'm just going to trophy this. We'll give him the land. That's fine. He's already ahead of us on mana anyway. Narset Parter of Veils. An annoying card, but one that doesn't really do a lot against us. That one, on the other hand, will. So, good old Jace the Mind Sculptor. He's gonna. Oh, he's gonna fate seal me. Ooh, spooky. I have a Renin Six, bro. You sure you want to do that? What do you put? He put it on top, so we're probably drawing the land. We did, in fact, draw the land. But this is fine, because we can do this. And this. Play our Lily. Make him discard the last card in his hand. We can take up. Get Verdant Catacombs. And. Basically, preventatively stop Fate Seal from happening. So now he just brainstorms because we have the fetch land, so... And he's probably looking for an answer to these these ridiculous planeswalkers. I think we're just going to ping this down. He drew Archmage's Charm. Is this another Teferi? Three mana Teferi. So now we can't cast instant speeds. So he's definitely getting the grip, like the, the grasp. What can we do here? I think we're going to fetch with Verdant, obviously, and we're going to get it back with Ren and Six. He's got an Archmage's Charm and an Unknown card in hand. I could ping this Narset, but I don't really see a reason to. We're not drawing cards right now. We'll just do this. We'll just get most of our duels out. Skip back the Verdant. We'll discard with Lily. He's probably going to discard the unknown card unless Archmage's Charm is just really bad. Is he just going to Cryptic Command something? Target player draws two cards himself. Okay, so now he's got three cards. We'll go down to two. He discarded a land. So we will pass the turn. This is gonna be another long one. I was I was hoping for some short lead, <laughs> some short matches, but uh, yeah, the mid range mirror into control matchup, they ain't gonna be fast. Our opponent really does need to find a way to deal with my planeswalkers, though. Because we're threatening ultimates on both of them right now. 
To be fair, a Snapcaster Mage just like ends my life, and I can't respond to it because of this stupid card. But we're gonna leave this on the field for now. We're gonna tick up, we're gonna discard this other land. I think, honestly, if this Liliana gets to ultimate, discard a second Teferi, we are lands and planeswalkers. I think that's the choice. Yeah, this is looks like a cryptic command. Bounce the Ren, because he can't beat that one. Snapcaster Mage now. Like, just have it all. Bury me in the ground, Dad. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Just f have it all. That's what happens when Jace the Mind Sculptor is allowed to brainstorm. This... It is I don't know if you guys can see my mouse because of my recording, but like these three planeswalkers my opponent is playing is just so not interesting or fun. And now he's got Castle Art and Veil, so <sighs> Well, we have stuff we can do in sideboard. Now he's fate sealing us. Keeps the card on top. Can't look at it this time. Oh the bouncing of the Yeah, that's cool. I think we're just going to concede here. I think I'm going to save my clock and just give it to him because I don't see us coming back from this. Fatal push. Yeah, no. So pushes are an easy exclude. Possibly even lightning bolts. Plague Engineer actually deals with Snapcaster Mages? Eh, I mean the body doesn't stick around, but I don't know if it's good or not. I like some number of bolts just to kill stuff. My old style against these matchups was just bring in all of these brutalities and use them as discard spells. Just absolutely shred their hand, I think. Well, we know he has tokens, so Plague Engineer is actually not bad. Can I find something to cut? Probably a Kroxa, because as good as it is, Rest in Peace and Path to Exile are more than likely in that deck, so... We will cut them and hope for the best. This looks like a <laughs> looks like a black red mid range hand, but this this is pretty good. Inquisition into collective brutality into boil if we ever can get there. We're gonna keep this. Opponent also didn't good luck me back. So he's a BM person. Good to know. We're going to keep the land or the fetch land just to uh, see if we can possibly draw into our third land. Because right now lands are going to be our biggest problem. Is he going to force a negation? The Inquisition on turn one? I would be so okay with that happening. What do we got? Search for his Kanta. I'm going to take the search. It's been a long time since I've seen that card. This is like the oldest of old school blue white control decks. We draw a land. We drew a Kroxa, but he's got Path and Purge. We're not going to fall into that trap. Would get two cards out of his hand, but uh, yeah, we're not going to do that. We want the Stomping Ground to get all of our colors online, and we're just going to reveal his hand and take a card and hopefully hit land three because if we don't I will be sad wow he drew a spell snare okay so his hand are these five cards might have been right to just to play the crooks <laughs> to so he paths it why so much discard doesn't seem great when I have bombs in my deck don't worry about it how's that sound big boy didn't hit land three, so we're already kind of losing. But is it mana leak now? You just gonna like draw perfects? Because he didn't have spell snare, he didn't have mana leak, and he didn't cast any of his other spells. So cool. Did he hit land three and just slams Narset? Of course he did. Yeah, not hitting land three. Him just hitting perfects to stop me from stopping his strategy, and. The fact that this video is are going to be plenty long enough 
Um, he's going to draw Jace. You know what? We'll just do this just to kind of see what's going on. We won't concede just yet for video sakes. We probably have lost this one. Okay, so he doesn't have land four. Uh, so again, it might have been right to play Kroxa, but he wouldn't have been able to purge it or path it, so it doesn't really matter. I want to prevent him... I can't draw cards with Seasoned Pyromancer because of this Narset. Currently this boil would be gas, because he doesn't have a way of stopping it. Let's see, hey, we drew land number three. Would you like to pay three life? No. Would like you to purge my Kroxa, please. Supreme Verdict. So he still has Path, Charm, and Mind Sculptor. Don't hit land number four. Didn't hit land number four, but it's a spell. So... Would be a good one, but... Yeah, you can't charm that one. <laughs> okay, you could just hit more mana leaks. That's fine. Three Teferi, yeah, so much fun. So much fun. Now our Blood Bright Elf is bad, smile. Yeah, yeah, of course, this is when we draw the land. You know what? Get boiled. Try to bait out his spells. He's gonna path it, that is fine. Actually, not conceding might have just gotten us pretty far ahead. <laughs> like I said, I definitely concede way too early on Magic Online in control matchups. If this was a paper event, I would 100% be playing this out way more than I am, but he has not drawn cards. I can't play the spell off of this, but this can kill the Narset, which means that I can play my Pyromancer if this resolves. What did we hit with Cascade? We hit a Pulse, which has been amazing, but we can't play it, so... Hopefully he didn't draw a second Purge, or a Path. I'm just gonna hit the Narset, because I don't think he wants to bounce a Bloodbraid Elf. Well, actually he might, because <laughs> does he really care? I don't know. But we're definitely gonna play the Pyromancer. He does bounce it just to draw cards, okay. Still can't cast Charm. But he's starting to get his lands back. So we're probably just going to... Wow. Well, now we have options. So he could just Field of Ruin my Raging Ravine. I like both of these cards a lot, so... We knew he drew a land off of one of his cards. What did we hit this time? Lightning bolts. Could have still hit a path or something, but we can definitely at least stop him from bouncing stuff and drawing cards. A second, he might have drawn into two lands, which would be bad. Was that a field of ruin? Sure. Let's see if he drew into the land. He did. So here comes Jace the Mind Sculptor. Actually, will he just hold up Charm, I wonder? Did not play Jace the Mind Sculptor. Does that mean he has, like, a... Uh, what's that card? Snapcaster Mage. Let's see if we can bait a spell. Just kills the Teferi. So, we can bait his spell with Liliana, his Archmage's Charm. Or it could be Cryptic Command. What do we got? We've got six lands. We can actually cast two three mana spells, but I really don't want to discard Ren and Six. I think this card could uh, bring us back. Do I think Liliana of the Veil matters? I think she does, but does she beat Ren and Six right now? 
I don't know. Wow, and it it dropped. She he didn't cast Archmage's Charm. Wow. He wants to draw two cards. It's both discard. Discard this mountain. Another freaking Teferi. So if I actually don't cast a single spell, I can just flash back Season Pyromancer. So we know he has a Jace the Mind Sculptor in hand. So I'm just going to pass the turn. I'm not casting my spell into your known counter magic. That's a lot of Archmage's charms, bro. Probably he's going to purge the Lily if I had to guess. No, he's going to opt. What's he digging for? Not sure. To a Narsets. What will we get this time with the wheel? Spin that wheel on thin ice. Will he hit my blood braid elf? I need more red mana. Pulse is good, but I do want to make him discard, so I think... Actually, can we just bait it? Can we just bait... Ooh, wait. Is this when I cast it or when it enters? When it enters. Okay, well, we're just going to do this. We're going to hit on Thin Ice. See if he has any sort of two-mana counter spells. Does not. Does he? Oh, he's got two blue mana up. Let's move to combat. Let's hit... Nine, how much is this? Two? We're just sending everything at Narset. I really don't feel like him flashing in a Snapcaster Mage and me not getting the the kill on the Planeswalker. Green, red, red and six lands. We can get Raging Ravine. Play the Raging Ravine. We can tick up our Lily, make him lose another card. Wow, not conceding was huge. So there you go, folks. Just a, a lesson in playing Magic Online. Don't concede. He discarded a Jace. I'm going to say he probably has a second one, or he thinks the Jace is not going to win him this game. Casts an Opt. To be fair, the Boil, when it hit, it only hit three or two lands, but just stopping him from casting Jace for so long and then him not doing anything, missing land drops, was huge. That looks like a Jace or a Cryptic Command. Return to hand, draw a card. More than okay with that, bud. You just tapped out four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. He's dead on board. Don't know if he missed that, but we can actually just cover everything. Okay, he conceded. Wow, I can't believe I actually came back from that. That is crazy. Okay, so on the draw, Plague Engineers are threats. Uh, Ashiok's probably not the worst. The rest would be way better than what we've got, but it is what it is. I think we... Do we run it back? Collective Brutality was not the best. What's Is there anything better than Collective Brutality? Ashiok, I guess? Maybe Spellbomb? I think we'll put in Spellbombs. It cycles. It does something. It's all we can really hope for. No discard, but threats. Lots of threats. I think we will keep. Our opponent snap kept, so. Scary thought. Also, no fetch land. <laughs> oh. I have to thought seize on turn one, right? Like, that's just what we do. That's what my deck does. Search for Ascanta, Mana Leak, Opt, and Teferi. I can't beat Search for Ascanta, so we're just going to get rid of Search and we'll play around the Mana Leak. Not much we can really do on that one. Second season Pyromancer, though. So, 
our opponent might just tap out and put Teferi onto the battlefield. This could be a Narset too. It is a Narset, so that answers which creature we're playing. We're going to play a Tarmogoyf and Bolt the Narset. Because Lightning Bolt doesn't have too many other targets. If he plays Teferi, it is what it is. <laughs> We can't, we can't stop that. So we actually know four cards in his hand because I got rid of the Teferi. But we got to play a little bit speed magic here because, wow, we're just going to on thin ice that Tarmogoyf? Okay, sure. Colonnade. So we know his entire hand. I don't want to play that Forgotten Cave, but we might have to. Let's do this. I think we're going to discard the second. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Mana Leak. That was, that was pretty dumb of me. But that's fine. I'm okay with that one getting countered. I don't know why I thought he only had one mana up. I thought Thin Ice was two. I was very wrong. So here comes Teferi. This is fine. We don't have instant speed stuff anyway. If we draw a second land or a fifth land, we can play both Pyromancer and Tarmogoyf, but it's tapped. So he's just going to bounce it with Teferi, which is fine. It's going to bounce on Thin Ice and then Supreme Verdict. That's cute. Cute line, cute line, cute line. Pulse. I can't do anything else, but I also don't really want to discard Pulse. So, yeah, whatever. We got the Teferi off the board. So we know he has on thin ice and another card. No land drop. So it's probably some form of removal. But that's a good start to the turn. <laughs> Counter it, bro. Archmage's Charm, draw two. Wow, hard cast force of negation. Okay. Does this spell resolve? No, it will not, is the answer to your question. Arch Magoo's charm, probably. We definitely know he does not have that Supreme Verdict anymore. So what could our opponent have? So we can either attack with Raging Ravine or Flashback Season Pyromancer. We're just going to Flashback Season Pyromancer. There's no reason to put anything like card for card on the table. When our opponent's not doing anything. That's an Archmage's Charm draw two. This guy's really good at drawing like three Archmage's Charms. Is that a cryptic command? Bounce like a Raging Ravine? Well, what, are you, what is your line here, bud? We're still behind on clock, so we kind of got to pick it up. He is going to bounce. Well, we'll just do it now. Puts a couple of 1-1s one on the battlefield. What are you going to do about it? Probably like play a Jace or play nothing. Uh, we'll, we'll crack this fetch. We don't really want to draw too many lands at this point. What am I even looking for? I don't even know, to be honest with you. Not the land. Definitely not that. I'm just going to do the same thing. Flashback season Pyromancer tokens. He's going to start scrying a bunch. We still know one card is on Thin Ice. So any real creature we play, he bottomed and topped one. Little Tef. You're going to bounce one of my tokens? You are going to bounce one of my tokens. Get that card draw going, man. There, there. Are you really Thin Icing a token? Ah. 
I don't know about that one, bud. That seems a bit aggressive. K command. That's a good one. So we can attack with Raging Ravine. What are the chances that it dies? Probably pretty high. But I think we have enough lands that we can take the hit. He could Cryptic Command us. Nah, we'll just play it safe. Both at Little Tef. Don't really care if this gets countered or killed, it's just kind of there. Interesting choice here is do we just make him discard a card and get back our Tarmogoyf? And I think that's the right line. Like if he counters a spell on my end step, like I don't really care. Gets a card out of his hand anyway. He discarded a purge. Well, that's a thing. We'll attack for three, see what he wants to do. We'll bait with the spell he knows about. And there's literally no reason not to just cast this and see what happens. Could be a lily, could or it could be a snapcaster mage. It was an oust, so it was not a good spell. And we know there's no more Mystic Sanctuary, so thank God for small favors. But he will start scrying with Castle Vantress. But he needs very specific cards. Very specific cards to win. If he doesn't respond, I can't believe I was going to concede. This is just the perfect example of why I concede way too early in control matchups. I just need to play them out. My room isn't cold, but <laughs> every time I'm playing Magic Online, I just get like freezing. I think because I sit in one position for way too long. Because you don't really have to actively move or do anything to play Magic. So just click buttons and stuff. But like my hands are freezing right now. So he put one on top and one on bottom. What is your out to this situation, sir? Supreme Verdict, Jace the Mind Sculptor, Arch Magoo's Charm, you got two more draws in and out, did you get there, one, is it a Supreme Verdict, did you get there, that looks like a Supreme Verdict, that's a shame, but we're still very much ahead, that's also going to help our cause. I should have done the Liliana trick with that bolt, but so this is a two turn clock. Can we get there? That's a real good one. <laughs> Thought sees <laughs> a little bit redundant. Hey bro, you're just dead. Did we really just win this game? Did this really just happen? Wow. Unreal. And I was gonna concede. <laughs> Let that be a lesson to you guys. Never concede on Magic Online unless you're dying. What a lesson. We'll see you guys in round number four, three and oh currently with Jund. Welcome back everybody for round number four with Modern Jund. New Age Modern after some bannings. We're 3-0. and On the draw, it looks like, for this round, but this hand is okay. If we're against an aggressive matchup, this Peatland could hurt us, but turn one Peatland into turn two Ravine uh, Inquisition. Pretty good keep, so as long as we're not against an aggressive matchup. If it's like burn, we're in trouble. Scalding Tarn and a do nothing. So could be another blue deck, could be blue red prowess. It's kind of a slow start for prowess though, so let's see what they're working with. 
it is blue red prowess and that is going to be a turn to stormwing entity I think I'm actually giving him the ability to cast the storming entity because otherwise he wouldn't have the mana to do both but he has to sack a land to do it so we'll see if he actually wants to go through with that I would imagine a turn two storming entity might just be good enough but this is a matchup that I just drew a sprite dragon okay so a removal spell is what we're looking for at this point something like bolts fatal push another land is not particularly it we could take the dart so he has to sack lands to use them which I think I might be okay with just f like because now he's forced to uh, like he can just float a red sack sack the mountain to dart Oh, well, he drew a land, so now he can just do it all. Yeah, sack the mountain to dart. Play the stormy entity. We're probably not winning this one. Our hand's a little clunky. No removal. Nurturing peatland is going to be beating us down the whole time. So unless we draw something real good this turn, it's looking a little rough. And he gets to scry too, because there's just a mountain of text on Storming Entity. He put two on top, so we're super dead. <laughs> like, we are beyond dead. But matchup will get better in sideboard games, so. The flood is definitely real. I think we need. Like, we just need action at this point. I don't really want to do this, but we need something to happen here. Like I said, we're pretty much already checked out of this one. Oh, we drew a bolt, but I don't think that's going to get me anywhere at this point. I think it's a little bit too late for that. Oh yeah, we are beyond dead. <laughs> That's more than seven. I'm dead. Okay, so turn four win. Pretty good for them. Let's do brutalities. Ren and Six is actually just abysmal in this matchup. Like, it kills nothing. Nothing. No card in their deck dies to Ren and Six. So that's an easy cut. The question is then, what else do we want, if anything? So Plague Engineer can block and trade for free while also stopping future Sprite Dragons, which is a thing that we might need to worry about. Boil, not really. Spell Bombs can hit the graveyard i have seen these decks running bedlam reveler for sideboard matchups i guess uh, thoughtseize it's so hard because thoughtseize is going to hit storming entity and stuff like that but i really don't want to lose two life i think i'd rather just deal with the storming entity when it hits the battlefield than lose the two life preemptively so on the final cut, maybe K command. It's not really gonna do very much. Yeah, we'll just do this. We'll hope for the best. If we get there, I think on the draw we will put uh, Thoughtseize back in over the other one that I can't think of right now. Uh, Spell bomb. Little slow. But we won't. We have turn one interaction, and turn three interaction, and hopefully we draw something by turn two, so we can like take their 
their best their creature on turn one which will save us a lot of life we have the black cleave cliffs and the raging ravine so we're not taking much damage in terms of our lands i could aggressively mulligan for more like bolts pushes uh the collective brutalities but i don't think mulliganing is the the right choice i think we just want to kind of hope we just want to play the jun strategy and and pray the top of our deck is kind to us let's see what his six card hand is hopefully we can punch a hole in it bolt swift spear that's a good six but we're just going to take swift spear so now he will probably opt on turn one Well, on my end step, obviously. But, so we played the Spire Bluff Canal. Blood Crypt, not really what we're looking for. This is why Season Pyromancer has been such a good card. Can just cycle away these lands that we don't really care about. So hopefully he draws some way to get this Storming Entity into the battlefield on turn two. What did he do? He put it on the bottom, so it wasn't a very good draw. Second Spire Bluff Canal and nothing. So I think what we're going to do is play this forest. Oh, what did we draw? We drew a lightning bolt. So we might go get Overgrown Tomb just to keep our mana like consistent and play this Pyromancer and draw some cards. Pitching these other lands. This might be a mistake in terms of my life total, but I think we've punched him. I think we've slowed him down enough that this is an okay play. And a Plague Engineer. Hopefully, no, like Sprite Dragon into Lightning Bolt. That would be not good. He might bolt this and cast Storming Entity. Burst Lightning. Okay, and then Storming Entity. Which looks like that's exactly what's going to happen. So a Liliana of the Veil off the top would be the perfect answer to this. So we know of Bolt and two other... What did he do with... One on bottom, one on top. A second lightning bolt so I don't know if these decks are still playing mutagenic growth he can't flash anything back right now so what we could do is be risky and go lightning bolt the the entity if it live or if it dies play plague engineer naming dragon and then we're safe from two threats or we can just pulse and hold up bolt I'm not sure which one is the best line. I think for this first, because we just have two lightning bolts, we're just going to pulse this. Plus, okay, he didn't have anything anyway. So the bolt plan would have worked. But if he kept a creature on top of his deck, which he probably did, we can answer it with lightning bolt and then play Plague Engineer and have bolt back up. To just another Stormwing Entity. light up the stage okay another lightning bolt and a land so actually a land here would be good for us because we can flash back pyromancer tarmogoyf is also a very good draw we're going to play this over plague engineer because we see this bolt we don't want to just play a spell that's just going to die we want to keep all of our creatures around so he's got two bolts. We're effectively at eight life. So our life total, it does matter right now. Is this a second storming entity? Okay, with the trigger of this storming entity on the stack, I'm going to attempt to lightning bolt this thing. He could bolt us in response, but I could once again bolt the storming entity. Is he going to opt? So in response to the opt, I will bolt again. So 
he still has a lightning bolt in his hand, but we've got rid of storming entity as a threat. I need to look up what sprite dragon is. A fairy dragon. So he put it on the bottom with opt. Put two cards on top. So that is very much not good for us. Well, two plague engineers helps. So we will name dragon. So Sprite Dragon is out of the question and we will attack for four. We know of Lightning Bolt in his hand. We need to draw some of our like bigger cards. Collective Brutality would be really good. Liliana of the Veil would be really good. Another Season Pyromancer to start cycling cards. That's a land. So a Bolt and an Unknown. He kept a land on top, a Swift Spear. So he's going to Bolt my Plague Engineer. I will 100% block, sir. Nothing? He might not have the, the lightning bolt anymore? Is that really true? Did he use the bolt? I thought he still had the bolt. Maybe he doesn't have the bolt anymore and the card in this, the top of his deck isn't, or the card in his hand isn't very good. It's very real possibility, I guess. We're gonna attack here, leave my options open to either flashing back the season Pyromancer or playing the second Plague Engineer. I think I wanna keep the Plague Engineer around. Like I said, I would much rather lose tokens than real cards, so. Plus, season Pyromancer is instant speed so we can keep our opponent guessing on what is in our hand can easily block with a swift spear. I'm just going to say, I'm sure he will attack us. He could have two spells? To remove my blocking tokens, but... There's the lightning bolts. No? I mean, I'm just leaving the, I'm leaving the blockers. Like, I don't really care if I lose them. And a passing of the turn. Trophy. I can play everything. That's what, six, seven? I really like saving Raging Ravine until I literally have no other options. Sometimes just making it bigger, faster is better, but so there's a lava dart targeting that stupid thing. Okay. So we're hitting him for six. I don't think he has lightning bolt in his hand. I think I was playing around a lightning bolt that wasn't in his hand. We're gonna name human here, just so he has to cast even more spells. I could double name dragon, but that seems like a bit overkill. We have trophy up. If any shenanigans happens. He's got one draw step, we'll see what he gets. The swift spear is in 01. If I've been playing around a lightning bolt that's not in his hand this whole game, I'm either a genius or dumb, and I'm not sure which. <laughs> to be 100% honest, I'm not sure which it is. I think we've brought Plague Engineer in every round. This card is insane. What is that targeting? It is targeting my face. A Stormwing Entity. When 
I'm ahead on clock against the aggressive deck, I feel really good. I feel very, very good in this situation. But game three, them on the play, if we win this, we still have to win this game, but game three with them on the play is terrifying because I'm reacting instead of being proactive. Kill their turn one play instead of thought seizing or something like that, so... Put two cards on top of their deck. Will he attack me? No. Would you like to get a land and shuffle your deck? Okay, that got him the concede. We were going to draw a land anyway, so it didn't matter. Okay, that was good. I think we're going to run it back exactly like this. Dealing with the lava darts and stuff from the graveyard will help. Plus it just cycles if we need to draw some cards. Definitely better than Thoughtseize. Like I said, I just don't like taking two damage against Prowess when they can just kill you on turn four. So let's see if we can keep the dream alive. This hand is pretty great. We don't know if it'll get there or not, but we will see. No turn one play is ginormous. It means they could be trying to set up a turn two Stormwing Entity, which would be terrifying. So the question here is, do we Inquisition or do we just play the Raging Ravine tapped? I think the correct choice is Inquisition. Mutagenic Growth, Lava Dart, Devil, Stormwing, Entity. So we're going to take the Growth. So perfect. I'm not going to draw a card off of this line because I want to get this Liliana of the Veil down. But this is the perfect example of why Spellbomb will be good here. At least if what I think he's going to do is going to happen if I think it works the way it does. We might be wrong, but if his plan is to just dart me, cast Stormwing Entity, I can just Liliana tick down and then we are golden. Dart me. Yep. Cast Stormwing Entity with no way of protecting this one from any shenanigans we're gonna just crack this spell bomb now get this dart out of here get this mutagenic growth what did he do he put two on the bottom which is even better for us we're just gonna crack this now I'm not gonna draw a card from it but we're getting rid of the lava dart to like at least give us some sort of insulation against the second storming entity coming down so also any bedlam reveler shenanigans like we've gone over Fatal Push, not particularly amazing right now. Oh, it also prevents him from just flashing back the dart and killing my Lily. So we have a Lily sticking around. But there you go. That's that's how you draw it up, folks. Soul Scar Mage, we'll just eat a Fatal Push. Or a Lightning Bolt. <laughs> I think I'm going to discard this second Lily. If he kills the first one, it is what it is. So I'm going to keep the Lightning Bolt. We could actually just duress him right now and see what's going on. I know of one Stormwing Entity. I'm not too scared of that right now, so I'm just going to keep my mana up, keep him guessing. We missed a land drop, which isn't good for us, but you know, you got to work with what you work with. Sprite Dragon, that will definitely be eating a Lightning Bolt. I'm assuming this will go at Lily. It will. It will not find its way to the target. Second Blood Bright Off is a good 
discard, like I don't want to discard this, but <clears throat> I think I'm just going to drain my opponent. I don't want to discard the Bloodbraid Elf. And he clearly didn't have a one mana spell, so his last card in hand is just Stormwing Entity, which we have the answer for with Bolt. Okay, well now we don't have the answer. <laughs> That was a good top deck from our opponent. So now we're definitely s kind of worried. He put two cards on top too, which is utterly terrifying. Can I please hit a land? Okay, we hit a land. Perfect. Give me something good, Bloodbraid Elf. Seasoned Pyromancer is very good. Draw some cards. Hopefully, an answer to Storming Entity. I don't want to discard any of these cards. I'm just going to let Lily sit. Hidden mode of Liliana of the Veil. Don't activate it. Make them just kill it. We draw another one man. What do we got? Sprite Dragon. Okay. So, no cards in hand. Playing the racing game here, folks. But our creatures are much bigger to start, so we actually have lethal on board. That's his top deck. Oh yeah, we're golden. He can't he can't attack. I mean, he can try to attack. It won't end well for him. He just conceded. So there you go. Wow. Okay. I was a little worried for a minute that we weren't going to get there at the end. But, uh, wow. Okay. So, Prowess. Good matchup for Jund. You just have to sort of line up your removal to hit the Storming Entity properly. I mean, sometimes you're just going to get blown out. But, like I said in an earlier round, that's just Magic the Gathering. So, we are 4-0 and with Modern Jund. Boomer Midrange. Is it back? We'll find out and see if we can get the 5-0, my first ever 5-0 for the record, in round number 5. Stay tuned. Hello everyone, welcome to round number 5 here with the Modern League with Jund, currently 4-0, going for the 5-0 trophy. Can we do it? Our opponent has mulliganed to 6, our hand is pretty solid. Let's see if we can get there. Is it another prowess deck? Bell Pierce. That probably means Blue Moon. That would be my guess. Living End. Okay, this one's tough. We're gonna take the. Eh, we're gonna take the Living End. We'll make him use his mana to cycle his stuff. This is probably the blue, I, would, it, I mean, it's got to be the blue version of Living, living End, right? Okay, so cycled both of his cards. Hopefully we don't hit something really good. He didn't hit, oh yeah, it's probably Electro Balance version of Living End. So, just Force of Negation, Remand. Yeah, so you're basically playing against a control deck that kills you with stupid creatures, so... We want some graveyard hate for game two. And we're just in the, he's just gonna keep, I hate remand. I hate remand decks so much because they just always keep casting remands. Like every turn it's remand, remand, remand. Okay. So, once again, if we draw a land, we can play Kroxa and Lily, which we did draw the land. 
I'm going to keep my life total relatively high. I'm just going to do this. Actually, I can't cast both my spells now. That was really silly of me. Revan number three. Okay, well, this is great. Yeah, this was just dumb. That's a, that's a misplay. Kind of tilted by triple remand. Looks like Electro Ballant. As for Told Living End. No? A Assassin's Trophy would be great. Nope. Third Liliana of the Veil. Neato. Just four copies of a man. Just bury me, bud. We're going to put this Croaks in the graveyard. Guess he's just digging for the living end. Cycle the Aven Mind Sensor. Or Windcaller Aven, excuse me. How dare I? Our hand is not good. <laughs> For the record, I may it may have been the right call to just discard something and cast Kroxa. But Electro Dominance Cryptic Command. Yeah, he's just he's just hoping to find the living end at this point. The thing is this entire deck just cycles. <laughs> so you never know if you're actually gonna get there. Lightning bolt. Uh he's just gonna cast cryptic command. I mean, he might bounce my Lily here with Cryptic. He did not. Okay, so he's living on a prayer. I need an Assassin's Trophy to get rid of this as foretold. Still hasn't hit it, huh? Like, if I just had Assassin's Trophy and he keeps this pile, like, the game just ends. <laughs> like, it just, it just ends. Just, just imagine. Just imagine this world. I mean, he's going to be able to cast Cryptic Command off of his As Foretold at this point, so. Discarded an Electro Dominance. That card sure does die to Fatal Push. I wonder if Veil of Summer is a card I should have in my sideboard. I don't really think that's the card that Jund really wants in a control matchup. Okay, bro, come on. You're going to bounce it. Stop thinking and just bounce my card. Draw a card. I'm going to recast Croak, so you're going to discard that card. God, I hope it's the living end. Tap all creatures. Hit big boy. A spell pierce, huh? And an unknown card. And he conceded. Okay. <laughs> what a absolutely shenanigans matchup. Uh we'll put some creatures in that we can discard, some spell bombs and ashiox. Creatures aren't going to be our problem. Ren and Six isn't very good. We can just bring this in to discard cards. We could also pillage him, I guess, technically, is a thing we could do. Kologon's command's not very good. We'll bring in one pillage. Maybe we'll hit a land or something. Basically, just cut the fat, all the removal value cards, and just bring in everything that stops combo decks. And this hand sucks against a combo deck. This hand isn't the worst, but it's really slow. I don't want to go to five. I'm going to hope this gets me there. Leyline. And naturally, my first draw is Dotsies.
but spell bomb on turn one will at least insulate us a little bit. Now he has to find an artifact hate card, I guess. As foretold. Blood Moon. Okay, not much we can do about that one. We'll play this long game, bud. This is going to be a tough one. Leyline plus Blood Moon, like... Well, that's... That's pretty big. <laughs> Hitting the black land, that's one step in towards of us getting what we need to do. And he doesn't have any blue mana, so the pillage might actually come in handy. It's really good. Really, really good. Now we just need to find like a Kroxa or something, or a Lily. Perfect. Discard this useless thought sees. In mind he needs a blue land for as foretold. So we drew ourselves a bunch of time. Basically. And then this lily should be able to help us get there. And I'm gonna keep that lily around. I think I'm just gonna pitch brutality. No, we'll pitch a land. We'll keep the brutality around just in case for now. Like I said we still have the spell bomb for the first living end. So we're insulated in terms of that. So what we're gonna do, what do we draw? Blood Braid Elf, not castable, but discard this. Oh yeah, I forgot. Spell bomb is literally worthless. I forgot. This is why I was running Soul Guide Lantern for a while. Completely forgot about that. Can't make him sack. I have trophy in my deck. Like Trophy in my deck would be huge. Like tr drawing Assassin's Trophy would be immense right now. Instead, we're just gonna draw a bunch of. Can't cast that Tarmogoyf, but we got one. Gonna lose to Leyline Blood Moon. Pretty simple. I, I can't cast this Assassin's Trophy. Doesn't matter. So, folks, remember, Soul Guide Lantern is better than Nihil Spell Bomb. We'll just concede here. No need to keep it going, we're pretty dead. Yeah, we weren't gonna we weren't gonna draw anything that got us there. So I mean we need to have spell bomb does this hit? Target player mills four cards. So I would have to mill myself to get his graveyard. I mean I don't the only other option is less of this and more of this. We'll see what happens. This is for all the marbles. I just need to keep my cool. His hand is not very good, especially if he ley lines me. His hand just literally does nothing, so. His hand is even worse. Do I really want to go down to five cards? I mean, once again, if he just ley lines on turn one. I'm really screwed. Looks like he has a hand without Leyline, but is really good, so he's deciding if he wants to keep it or not, would be my guess. We will keep. Pitch this. Done. Does he have Leyline? Of course he does. I want to concede right now. Yep. So kept a seven card hand with Leyline, we'll see if he just has it all. Or if it's a bad hand with Leyline, that was the other option. 
I mean, once again, two of our spells are dead, so this is essentially a mana four. Doesn't it doesn't do anything, so we'll just pass. I think uh, the dream is dead. I mean, he's probably just going to slam. It's really disappointing when you lose because Nihil Spellbomb says target and they literally just printed a better version. We're living on a prayer. Like I said, the only real way this game comes out on top for us is if he kept the hand because it had Leyland of Sanctity and it's not good. And we somehow can scrounge a win, but it seems very unlikely. I've lost a lot of league games to combo decks that just side for Leyland of Sanctity and I can't do anything because they always have it. I think majority of my losses recently with Jund Online have been to combo decks with Leyland. We don't have counter spells. We just play discard. And if they just have Leyland every game, you don't really win. So we're going to discard these two discard spells because those creatures are really large and this doesn't kill anything and this literally doesn't have targets so we'll get two one ones we'll discard these two hit a second plague engineer which actually might help us if we're able to find the second swamp okay he's not doing anything he probably just has some cyclers oh my god uh, he might counter this. He probably has a counter spell for this, but he didn't have a counter spell. I will mill myself. So now we're insulated against Leyline, or not Leyline, um, Living End. Because we actually also have a Tarmogoyf in our graveyard. Any creatures that die at this point for us just come back with Living End, so. Although he could just cycle a bunch of stuff. What is this? Electro dominance? Crashing footfalls, that's fine. We weren't gonna be able to block those anyway with trample. Wow, he just went for me. Wow, we drew the forest too. Get more creatures in the graveyard. We drew the trophy. I'm holding this trophy. I don't really know what I want to hit yet. Another Blood Moon, that's fine. Probably should have cast on the As Foretold. I took out all my removal, so I think I'm just dead here. What can I draw? What can I possibly hit that will save me in this situation? Another trophy. Bloodbraid Elf. I 
that's not it. Man. I believe, come on. Ah, oh, what a shame. So close, yet not there. Well, it's disappointing that we didn't get the 5-0, but I really shouldn't be sad because that was a really good representation of what uh, Jund is right now. I think it's very well positioned in the current field uh, with the Wild West style thing going on that Modern is. You're sort of just 50-50 against a lot of stuff. I mean, you saw even with all of those things against like the blue-white control deck that we were able to come back against that silly Electro Dominance bullcrap was uh, pretty pretty close. I think if I played it a little bit tighter, I was a little bit tired, a little bit tilted at the end there, which made me play pretty bad. So I think if we got there, we could have got there if I just played a little tighter. Maybe hit the ley line and not the as foretold and all that other stuff and we can just kind of go off from there but it is what it is we are we went 4-1 I think Jund is back I think it is firmly in the driver's seat right now it's a very solid deck so if you're a fan of black green X mid-range decks be sure to sleeve up your lilies and your tarmogoyfs and start beating face thank you guys very much for watching uh, please tune into more SCG hobby stuff if you would like to see more content like this from Magic Take care. Have a great day, everybody.